everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to our webinar session tonight on a Saturday. I hope everyone had had your dinner. My name is Rachel, your caring pharmacist, and also your host for tonight. We're going to talk about an interesting topic today, which is diabetes and diabetic kidney disease. Do you know that diabetes can cause kidney problems? About one in three adults with diabetes have kidney problems. Diabetic kidney disease affects our kidney function uh, to do its normal job, which is to remove waste product and also extra body, extra fluids from our body. Today, we are honored to have Dr. Ma Dewey, a consultant nephrologist from Pantai Hospital Ampang, to as our speaker tonight to talk to us about this intriguing topic. So if you have any burning questions regarding diabetes and diabetic kidney disease, just type your questions in the chat box section and we will get our expert to answer them shortly after this during our Q&A session later on. Also, we will be having two giveaways. So stay tuned till the very end of this webinar and stand a chance to win those awesome prizes. Without further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome Dr. Matt. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Ma. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. How have you been doing lately, despite the pandemic going on? Yeah, I've been adapting the new norm, new, new norm, and new, new, new norm, because it's only home wave is coming all the way. And we hope that it get over soon, and that we have to readjust our norm again, and uh, hopefully everyone stay healthy. Yeah, true, true, because I've been very busy myself working in the retail outlet as well, as the COVID cases is going through the roof right now. Um, but I am thankful that most of us have had our vaccines completed with booster shots. So touch wood, if we did contract COVID, at least we, have, we will suffer less life-threatening side effects. However, I think those who have comorbidities such as diabetics, uh, will have to be extra vigilant because they will suffer from more serious complications from COVID. Hence, I personally think that tonight's topic is very relevant and handy. And so is all our audiences here who will be very keen to learn more about diabetes and diabetic kidney disease from you. So I won't keep everyone waiting. I'll pass over the session to you so you can share your slide with us, Dr. Over okay, so I take over from here. So I'm going to share my slide of the diabetes and kidney disease. Yeah. So hopefully everyone can see me well. All right. So today I'm going to tell you what is the diabetes and kidney disease. So first of all, this is online of my talk. What is the diabetes? What is the diabetic kidney disease? And how can you prevent diabetic kidney disease and keeping it from getting worse? And we'll get get end the section by Q and A section. So diabetes mellitus is a disease that occur when your body cannot use sugar normally, which is glucose normally. As we know that glucose is actually is a sugar is a main source of our body cell. So the level of your sugar are controlled by a hormone called insulin, which is made by pancreas. So you imagine your insulin is actually is the key. And you need to enter a keyhole, open up the door for the sugar or for the glucose to enter the cell, no matter what kind of cell, it's either go to your brain or it is go to your muscle so they keep them working, functioning well, keep your brain thinking, keep your muscle working and you can run 1000 meters, that's no problem, if your body can function well. The issue is, if you have diabetes mellitus, this means that your body cannot use up the sugar via a few types of the diabetes is vaccine can, can tell you why your body cannot use a sugar. The commonest type of the diabetes, it will be type 2 diabetes. We total have three types, type 1, type 2, and so-called type 3, and we call it gestational diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, which is, is lacking of insulin or insulin insufficiency, usually happen a young age group, which is comprised Five to ten percent of the population, which is mean diabetes population. Type two diabetes, which is means that resistance of your insulin, which means that your body 
you have the you have the key, but your keyhole couldn't match with the your key, which is your insulin. Hence, your body couldn't use up, couldn't open the door for the sugar go into a cell and for them to functioning well. So we call it it is actually resistant of the insulin. At the end of the disease. Why you, why you have a diabetes type 2 for quite some time, your pancreas started to get exhausted and you are getting lack of insulin. So since then, at the, usually at the advanced stage of the diabetes, the doctor, the doctor might advise you to say that you might need to replace with insulin, hence you end up with injection. The type 3, so-called type 3, which is a diabetes, uh, gestational diabetes, the diabetes diagnosed only when the patients have uh, this uh, pregnancy. So how to diagnose a diabetes mellitus? It's actually quite simple. You just need to go to any nearby your healthcare center or any healthcare center. You ask for the, the blood for the sugar check. If you are fasting, that means you are not eating or not drinking anything straight more than uh, 8 hours, then you will get your fasting sugar test. If you have a blood sugar more than seven, then most likely you have diabetes, provided you have a symptom. Provided what symptom you have, high sugar symptom. Let me tell you what is high sugar symptom. Basically, if you are think you are getting thirsty, the usual day you not to get that thirsty, suddenly you feel very thirsty throughout the days and you are suddenly be eating or you are suddenly urination increased frequency and add up amount. And you suddenly feel very excessive uh, lethargy that you couldn't expand despite you have a good sleep and you have a blurring of vision. Uh, that is the symptoms of you might have high sugar in your blood. We call it you might have diabetes. So once you diagnose to have uh, diabetes, is not only by your blood test, that your fasting blood test more than seven. You also, if you are unable to fasting, if you take your blood you found that your sugar is more than 11.1, it's basically you also can be diagnosed as diabetes. Or if your insurance or any of your doctor help you to check your so HDL1C, that means your red blood cell is self saturated with how much of sugar on top of them, we call it HbA1c. If they saturated more than 6.5, this is America guideline. If a Malaysia guideline would usually use more than 6.3, you are basically you are diabetic. So with uh throughout all these criteria, clear cut objective criteria, so the diabetes to be diagnosed is quite clear cut. So I wanted to today to tell everyone that the important thing it is. As a doctor, we suppose wanted to everyone able to reverse the disease instead or we treat the disease. It makes us happy you can reverse the disease so you you were uh, unable to suffer unnecessary complications. So I want to tell you today is pre-diabetes, which is I'm more interested in pre-diabetes. The pre-diabetes, if you check your sugar, your fasting sugar is 6.1 to 6.9 and you have slightly symptom or you don't have symptom but you still diagnose pre-diabetes that means your body is start to resistant to insulin like what i say you your keyhole is changing pattern or is saturated with some sugar so that your insulin as a key it couldn't open up the door for the your sugar to go into a proper place for them to function well for like example your muscle so you will feel lethargy you will feel your muscle ache but because they don't have sugar, so they make other other form of uh, energy like the ketone itself. So your muscle ache is will be frequent if you frequently to have this symptom and frequently to have this phenomenon. We call it pre-diabetes. At the same time, if you after non-fasting sugar is seven point eight to eleven, you are also that you are also will be diagnosed pre-diabetic status. Yeah. So this is very important. So why I, we wanted to have this talk, this is because the prevalence diabetes in Malaysia, according to National Health and Mobility Surveillance 2019, our prevalence in adults is increasing drastically. From 2015, we have 13.4% of population to diagnose diabetes. Up to now, is 
2019 is already 18.3 percent. 18.3 percent, basically, you are saying five adult, one of it might has had diabetes. If you are gathering five of you, one of it actually have diabetes. It's not only pre-diabetes, but it is diabetes. But most of us see this uh, diabetes trend 2011 to 2019. The left sided graph is basically tell you almost half of us do not we have diabetes until you go for body check. Uh, only you will realize that actually you have diabetes and you will diagnose diabetes and you either need the lifestyle changing and also you might need to take the medications for diabetes. So the prevalent diabetes also more prominent in age group 40, 40 years and above. So those are 40 years and above. Basically, we are really encouraging everyone do the blood test for those who are, especially those who are, have a strong family history of diabetes, those who are actually obese or those who are actually uh, overweight, they have, uh, they know how to calculate the BMI and those who are actually uh, have some disease, they uh, predipose them to have diabetes such that they need to take a long term of steroid. So they were predisposing to diabetes by right. 40 year old and above also, you should have a diabetes check per year. So the overweight population in Southeast Asia, Malaysia will be the number one, you see. We are the among the, the, the obese among all, all the country. And why obese is so important? Because we know that the obesity is direct related to diabetes. It will cause one syndrome we call it metabolic syndrome. That basically means that your metabolism got problem. If you have an obesity, definitely you will form a resistance to the insulin because you 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 are actually tendency to make your make your body not to be so sensitive to the insulin that you have. So up to fifty point one of uh, adult populations, according to two thousand nineteen of National Health Mobility Surveillance said. 30.4% is overweight, 19.7% is obesity, which is a very huge number, almost two in one. One of out of two must have one is obese or overweight, which is uh, the, the condition is quite severe. And particular is high in among the women, and particular this is high among the those who are aged 55 to 59 years old. So, and also uh, do not forget our ch children that we age of four, five to seventeen year old, those who also up to thirty percent they are overweight and obese. So why the all this obesity and uh, metabolic syndrome with tendency we cause a tendency to develop the diabetes uh, will occur is basically because our food we have variety of food, very colorful of food, a lot of comfort food. Hence, uh, really very easy, available and accessible. Hence, we are easy to develop all this metabolic sy syndrome, obesity and diabetes. Our physical activity below, we playing handphone all the time. And uh, you see, we are very, uh, very less active, active, especially while uh, this COVID endemic happened. So uh, we seldom go outdoor during that time and uh, be becomes a lot of people being complained. I've been putting on weight while the COVID pandemic time and I'm not doing uh, exercise during uh, COVID pandemic time. So that's also contribution factor of uh, the obesity and subsequently will become diabetes. The environment is not friendly or whether it is a genetic wise predisposing someone to have obesity and even disease stress and medicine were also causing someone to be obesity and predisposing to uh, diabetes mellitus. So WHO actually have recommended we should take only 10% of uh, daily calorie intake, which is simple sugar or we call it unhealthy sugar. The unhealthy sugar basically is tell us it's a processed sugar. The processed sugar is like your white sugar, your brown sugar, your even some of the unpure honey as well. They consider as uh, this simple sugar. We we are only allowed to take ten percent. So example like a adult female, your calorie intake per day is around two thousand. Okay, so ten percent equal to two hundred kilocal by the unhealthy sugar. So how much is 200 kilocal, which, which is, if you can imagine, our one sugar cube is five grams of sugar. 
is about 20 kilocal. So 200 kilocal should be 40 grams of sugar or actually is 10 uh, sugar cube uh, per meat consumed per day. So you have to understand that our one teaspoon equal to one sugar cube equal to one sugar pack. So that means that if you have uh, only able to take 10 sugar cube, you do you think you easily to excessive a quarter? The answer is yes. If you are simply go to any fair mark, 7-Eleven to grab any uh, sweetener beverage, you are very easily over your daily quota and you not permit to take more than two drinks per day by right. So you see, if I take bush juice, which is very healthy, it seems to be healthy. Sorry, I'm not biased to any brand. It just happened to uh, come out this brand. So this is a blueberry blush. It's found very healthy. Low-fat smoothie, original size. So actually equal to, I already took that, 22 tablespoons of sugar. Yeah, take Coca-Cola, I take 16 spoon tablespoon of, uh, of simple sugar, unhealthy sugar, and so on and so forth. So we must be uh, very vigilant while choosing the beverage. The best beverage ever is just like your sky juice only and uh, you just take a plain water which is uh, ever healthy drink that you actually uh, can take and uh, encourage to take. So the the once we enter, once we, you are taking a lot of sugar, of course you are more predisposing to diabetes mellitus because you train your body to a so immune, so resistant to the insulin because they keep crazily secreting insulin until your, body, until your body cannot cope and cannot recognize when to not secreting insulin, hence they form resistance. So you have a tendency to causing the these uh, complications of diabetes. So the complication of diabetes, you you really uh, we divide into a two big group. One is a big vessel disease, another type is a small vessel disease. The big vessel disease, which is happen in your heart, uh, like we usually see patient come to us, I like very left side chest pain, and typically they are sweating, they have uh, all nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath. They have uh, all this heartbeat very fast, uh, they might have heart attack. So that means the diabetes itself, because it's too sweet already, the your blood sugar is too concentrated, it blockage happen chronically, it blockage happen in your heart vessel. If you your the blockage happen at the brain, they causing a stroke. There's a blood vessel blockage at your lower limb, then you have a blackish of your lower limbs and the toes itself, and they become dead off the and you even may end up with amputation. Besides all that, they also the diabetes also attack the small vessel. They attack the small vessel by it. They eat up the all the small vessel we supposed to supply the nutrition to our small nerve. So the first day our patient will usually complain is the numbness. They couldn't feel anything. So they couldn't feel anything and at the end of the day, subsequently while the disease becomes severe, they feel pain. So they even feel pain at night. They couldn't sleep, which is causing very troublesome to a patient and really affected their quality of life. Some some uh, diabetes also will attack the eye. So uh, which is uh, the patients might I mean might come to us usually complaints of sudden suddenly just uh, one night it become blindness. Suddenly it become blurring of vision and uh, couldn't see. Usually it is due to diabetes effect and the vessels or the eyes have been blocked and clotting and hence become the blindness. Last but not least is my kidney topic, which is a kidney disease that the, they are always affected. The diabetes with kidney disease, they are always linked together because you have to understand, if you have the extra sugar in your blood, where they, where they, this extra sugar go? Of course, they go to kidney because kidney is the only place that your sugar can can try to excrete from your body. So the kidney will be the organs to be sacrificed. After all, after all, the organ uh, also try to uh, very struggling themselves as well. While you have a diabetes mellitus, so the diabetic kidney disease basically basically uh, we we call it the nephropathy, which is nephro is kidney pathy, which is Disease. So, is in the Malaysia data up to 2019, the one 
once you diagnose diabetes, you have 14.6% of uh, possibility you will get this, uh, uh, this kidney disease. Okay, so another headline of uh, 2018 in Malaysia, which is uh, up to 69% of new patients, new patients on dialysis, they are all having back to diabetes mellitus. So why the diabetic cause kidney damage? This is just because the high sugar level in the blood can really cause the kidney vessel to be narrow and clogged. That there's there's a similar mechanism go to other organs as well. Besides of that, the nerves of the bladder are damaged, just like your lower limb nerve fiber are damaged. They couldn't feel that your bladder is full. Hence, the pressure of backflow of urine causing further backflow to the kidney and causing further damage. And also, those who are diabetes mellitus, they have tendency to have a urinary tract infection. So, in the diabetes mellitus, uh, we have uh, uh, for diabetes mellitus causing the uh, diabetes kidney disease, we have five stages. Stage 1 and 2, it is not able to detect clinically. Hence, the patient usually has no symptoms and they basically they feel they are well. Why, doctor, you need to be so hoo-ha, so worried? I don't think I am ill until I need to accept medication. They usually, they will say like that. So, stage 1 and 2, they don't have symptoms, but they might present to us while they collect their urine sample, they have some protein in their urine. We call, we call it microalbuminemia. So all these tests need to really test by urine district only be able to appreciate that. Some of them able to see by their urine, they see the bubble and they worry, they, they, feel, they feel they wanted to have a real body checkup, which is very encouraging. So that to ensure that the bubble in the urine, not always, no, not all the time, it is due to the urine, the protein leakage in the urine. Not all the time must be a kidney disease. Sometimes it's gravity related, the urine water bubble, which is uh, quite common, especially in the male patients. Huh? So, uh, so stage one and two need the urine check and also they, they, they need to have their proper diabetes control. So to pre prevent them go to an advanced stage of a diabetic kidney disease. Okay. So from the step three, four, five, they started to have a clinical symptom. They started to have a, like, uh, they were complain to us, the urine bubble getting a lot and they start to have a leg swelling. They start to have uh, all, all the big pain, muscle aid. Okay. They start to experience uh, some uh, shortness of breath, lethargy. They also, even up to the end of the state, they start to have a body itchiness and also they might have a sitting uh, episode. If their kidney really uh, impaired up to a level, they require dialysis. Okay. So, uh, whether one patient, whether they can from the stage one jump up to stage five, which is still possible, not to say not possible, is up to a genetic predisposing and also up to a patient dietary pattern and also how is their lifestyle, how they predispose themselves to any possible of uh, acute kidney injury due to other causes. Such as example, if they take unknown source of painkiller, the black pill by a traditional medication, which is to have a four times dose of painkiller, that usually uh, if a patient took that kind of medication, I vary against that. And also some of them to take the unknown source of supplement, claim is very good. And especially for those who are wanted to slimming, they take unknown source of slimming pill, which is also will cause very high risk of kidney failure. So where to treat the diabetic kidney disease? We have two methods. One is your method, one is my method. Your method does mean that your effort is non-drug method. Non-drug method, basically, we need the patient to really have a proper diet control. If they're smoking, please ask them to not smoke uh, because you have to understand smoking and 3,000 more and toxins inside of this one secret. So you don't want to predispose your body to all the this toxin thing. Stop alcohol because alcohol at the end of the end product, it is still sugar and worsening of diabetes. 
Exercise just to make your muscle to be uh, less resistant to insulin and make them uh, uh, more sensitive to sugar and insulin uh, so that it can take in, into your body and uh, use the sugar properly instead of uh, making them and leave it in your blood vessel system yeah, and causing trouble. So any possible offending medication, just like what I say, the you're not supposed to take transitional medication. You're not supposed to take unknown source of painkiller. Yeah. So drug wise, it is my job, okay, which is that I supposed to control your sugar well, okay. At the same time, I hope you do the sugar control. Uh, I mean, sugar check at home. I will tell you how to control it uh, usually. So the doctor of you also will tell you how to check the sugar at home. What is the manner that you should check your sugar if you really have diabetes? Control your blood pressure because they are good friends. Okay, you control your blood pressure, automatic your sugar also will, will reduce and co-manage to the vessel. Believe me, they usually, it could be, the if once you have diabetes, 80% of you will have a hypertension, which is uh, high blood pressure as well. Control the lipid itself because their study really show that you control your lipid, you're really able to retard your uh, kidney disease well, okay, is really scientific evidence. Sensations of your protein losing in urine, which is also very important. Every losing of protein in urine is the injury to your kidney. So how to make it sensations of pro protein leakage in urine? Not only you do the control sugar, control blood pressure, control lipid well, you also, your doctor must give you the medication to control your protein leakage in the urine, but also depends the stage of your diabetic kidney disease and also your genetic weather predisposing, your diet, your culture predisposing of uh, uh, of the whether you are suitable or not for the uh, medication being suggested for for the these uh, sensations of the protein leakage in the urine. You see. So basically, this uh, graph, this cartoon, just tell you, uh, summarize it just now, whatever I have said. So the diet itself, I will tell you how we've been suggest the patients to take the diet. Of course, it's possible for the early state, like I said, state one or two, you still do not have a clinically detectable kidney disease. You are able to take the total diet replacement therapy, but this is very strict therapy. Not everyone can do it, okay? And also depends on your body weight. It's uh, it proposed that uh, it been proposed by study that you are taking less than eight hundred kilocal per day. So we propose that if you are able to reduce the weight loss up to fifteen percent, not by one month. It's also not by six months, it's by nine months. Okay, you take your time to reduce the body weight. You no need to be in a hurry because in a hurry, you are causing a lot of complications, suddenly nutrition deficiency, all this kind of thing. We do want that. So if you're able to weight loss up to 15%, you're able to reduce your HbA1c or sugar control by two, two, uh, two units, two minimum, we will say that, or 2%. So, uh, so you try to end six months reduced by 10%. If you're able to do that by your own effort and by this uh, diet control, which is very good, yeah? Okay. So the balanced diet that we propose also, if you can take your carbohydrate 50 per, by 50% of uh, one of uh, uh, in the diet, take the protein 20% and take the fat around 30% and take high fiber diet, uh, which is 20 to 30 gram fiber per day. So this is the uh, once in uh, upon the time Malaysia uh Kesehatan Malaysia actually men sorry Menteri Kesehatan Malaysia or uh, with Ministry of Health actually recommend that uh we can take suku suku sparrow suku suku sparrow which is basically they just ask us to take the carbohydrate twenty five percent the protein itself take another twenty five percent and fifty percent of your the the this uh, that side, which is uh, comply, uh, which is have a uh, fill uh, up with uh, vegetable and uh, even the this uh, fruit. But the fruit itself, please uh, choose the unsweetened fruit, which is uh, uh, you have to know that what fruit do not take, which which type of fruit which is more sweet. Like this uh, banana is the wrong example. I'm sorry about that. Like, this is very high calorie, so we are not encouraged uh, if you have a uh, fully controlled diabetes. 
perhaps you shouldn't take the banana and those who are very sweet, uh, uh, very sweet uh, fruit. Huh? So how is the, if you are being recommended to take the 20 to 30 gram fiber by WHO, but this is how 30 gram of fiber per day look like, you see. Do you think you're able to compliance this? If you are think you can able to compliance this, please do not give up. Please go ahead with this and you can changing the menu. You can look up and look into uh, any possible of uh, of the source that what is fiber diet and uh, Persistent uh, practice that if a female you up to twenty you are enough. If the male please take up to thirty gram fiber per day, which is really really much recommended. Yeah. So you feel feeling you don't feel like always hungry, so that you won't you won't have uh, all this uh, uncontrolled diet behavior. Hence your of course your diabetes will very well control after that. So the late diabetic kidney disease that we recommended um, the diabetic kidney disease with the recommended the diet we ask a patient to have a low protein diet which is also by a lot of uh, scientific proof we got meta-analysis proof uh. so um we recommended you can take 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 gram per kilo per day that means your body weight kilo is uh, by your body weight then you calculate it so uh, most of patients is around 40 to 50 grams of protein per day, okay? For, for 40 to 50 grams per day, which is uh, why we wanted to do so, so that we do want your uh, kidney to further burden because kidney itself, it is also one of the organs to excrete the extra or excessive of protein, the unwanted uh, waste of protein, we call it urea, that, that uh that is uh, will cause harm to your body, you see. So we wanted the patients to take less protein diet to cause the less burden to the kidney so the kidney can breathe, so the kidney can really uh, to stop damage and uh, last longer and not going to the stage of dialysis, yeah? So for those who are really able to compliance, we are uh, actually recommended them to take very low protein diet, but must be a supplementary. It's either by a ketone analog amino acid, which is one of the supplement. Have a few studies to show that it is uh, able to maintain the patient health and also able to maintain the patient nutrition if we become uh, the at the same time take the there. This a very low protein diet, yeah. So of course exercise is very useful. Oh, uh, with uh, by uh, numbers, I, I there's there's a uh, numerous numerous study say that if you are able to exercise, they up to hundred fifty minutes per week. That means thirty minutes, thirty minutes for five days per week, either by brisk walk or cycling, or you fifteen minutes five times per week by uh, running or jogging. All this uh, it really able to reduce your sugar level. And uh, we WHO we recommended you taking five times a week per uh, weeks of uh, aerobic exercise and two times a week resistant exercise. We resistant has been heavy lifting all this kind of exercise, uh, which is very helpful for your body. You see, so because aerobic, it is not only increase your muscle uh, sensitivity to uh, insulin. At the same time, it helps you to train your cardio respiratory uh, capacity and uh, this. Uh, uh, energy you see so the resistant exercise it is not also it is good to train your muscle again the uh, for those who are wanted to have uh, increase the insulin sensitivity and also it actually help your bone and uh, your bone and muscle to be strong and so that you won't get the osteoporosis at the end of the day so of course the very important that uh, if all the can all the patients and uh, all the public can know that uh, please go often and check yourself for any uh, healthcare service or healthcare awareness service so that that you know uh, what is the diabetes mellitus it is about and also what you can do for yourself and what you can check and what you should monitor yourself yeah. So, of course, you can go for any kinds of program being recommended even to come today to my talk, you see. So, I think this is my last slide and uh, any questions that I hopefully I can help you and answer you by tonight.
Thank you so much, Dr. Ma, for your insightful sharing. I myself have learned a lot from the reputation flights, and I'm sure everyone here does as well. Indeed, the best way to prevent or delay diabetic kidney disease is to maintain a healthy lifestyle and also adequately manage our blood sugar, our cholesterol, as well as our blood pressure. As we're all too familiar with this saying, prevention is better than cure. I know it sounds very cliche, but I think all of us need to be reminded on this and also put into practice on what we've learned tonight. All right, well, coming to our Q&A session, I can see there are some questions coming in from the floor. So for those of you who have any burning questions, please continue to type it into the chat box and we'll get them answered by our expert. So don't miss this golden opportunity to ask Dr. Ma about your question. Okay, Doctor, I'm gonna read the questions to you. Is that all right? Okay. okay. Right. So I have one question. The first one is: How do you differentiate the diagnosis between pre-diabetic and diabetes? I think uh, this question is more towards about if you have probably when you're doing the blood sugar test at home, you don't know whether you're diabetic or 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 you are pre-diabetic. How do you differentiate that, please? As I saying before that if you are already fasting, basically we suggest it's more than eight hours. If you're already fasting and you are fasting enough, so you check at home, which is the, if you are checking at home, you have to understand you are taking capillary blood, which is not the venous blood that we are taking from our lab or any healthcare uh, facility. Usually they take your center blood instead of your periphery blood. So your capillary blood, you have to understand that discrepancy is around 0 0.5. 0 0.5, they might be not that accurate. So if you wanted to know, you roughly can know that if you are really fasting, but your blood is around 6.1 to 6.9, not up to 7 yet, then you might have pre diabetes, but you must confirm to go to any healthcare center to reconfirm with the blood test and we re recheck the blood. Not not to diagnose at home. The capillary blood never been recommended diagnose at home. They must proceed with the proper blood test in the, any healthcare setting center. Yeah. So of course if you wanted to say that you don't want fasting, you you wanted to directly check your blood once your blood is actually more than 7.8 up to 11.1, this is the range that we usually take as the pre diabetes. Yeah? Okay. All right. Okay. So we do suggest to seek medical attention. So go to your clinic or your nearest hospital for a proper blood test after this. Okay. So the second question. So if the patient is diabetic or pre-diabetic, is it okay to suggest the patient to change to low GI diet straight away? Yeah, that's a very good question. First of all, depends. Uh, I mean, this is very good. And um, in a study saying that the low GI, so you maintain your uh, feeling of food. I mean, you feel, you maintain your uh, sense of satisfaction of your eating. You feel full all the time, then you won't have uh, all this uh, uh, keeping on one to eating and uh, it's usually low GI low GI uh, food, they are very high fiber, which is very good. But provided if you are taking the also is a, a moderate amount because you have to understand low GI, they're trying to, uh, they don't have the suddenly surge of glucose, but their total glucose in your body will still be the same will still be the same. So if you take the large amounts of a low GI uh, food diet, you will still get the large amount of sugar. Your sugar still will be poorly controlled, which is still the same. Okay? Okay. Okay. So the third question, because we did mention that diabetes can cause kidney disease, so we have a question say, vice versa, can kidney disease cause diabetes? Okay. This is a very good question. Usually, the, the uh, kidney disease, we, the, we have to see what kind of kidney disease. Usually, if the genetic causing kidney disease and we usually your doctor, uh, they not tendency to start you on steroid, you won't cause diabetes. That's what I say. If you only the medications that predisposing 
uh, certain people will become diabetes. Usually in our in our setting is uh, uh, we give steroid for those who are we wanted to treat their, their kidney disease due to their uh, their own antibody attack them themselves or attack their kidney. So the steroid itself will cause kidney disease. Those who are kidney transplant, those who have never had diabetes, after the kidney transplant, we give certain medication for those who are transplant, they must understand what I'm saying that we give a techolimer, cyclosporin, or this kind of medication that's a list of medication really will cause your pancreatic, your pancreas itself to be beta cell to be exhausted and hence the insulin will be really, really uh uh, lacking, lacking off at the end of the day and also you will become a diabetes just because of the treatment instead of the kidney disease itself. Coming to the uh, steroid causing, predisposing the, uh, patient to diabetes, I do come across with a lot of patients self-medicating with steroids. So for example, if they have very bad eczema, they've been to the doctors once and then now, now they because it's hard for them to go to the clinic. So they just diagnose themselves, say, oh, I probably need a steroid because previously I had a similar condition and the doctor gave me steroid. So they always come to the pharmacy and ask for steroid. Same as gout patients, they always ask for steroids as well. So is it a good way to suggest to patients not to self-medicate with steroids? Oh, there's of course, there's of course, they shouldn't to have, uh, we call it abuse to steroid, which is uh, really will cause harm at the end of the day. They might feel comfortable while they're eating it or taking that for a few days, but it is a big loss for them because the long run, the diabetes is really can cause a lot of trouble to any single organs of the human body. So the risk of steroid is the same regardless whether it's oral or whether it's IV? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, then. Right. So the fourth question I have is, so does it mean that diabetic patients can't touch normal sugar at, at, at all? I've encountered this many times because uh, some people come in for cough medicines and then it contains sugar. And so they refuse to take it and they say like, oh, okay, it contains sugar. So I'm not allowed to have any sugar at all because I'm diabetic. Is that correct? As I've been saying that they are actually allowed to touch sugar by the, the amount of sugar they must uh, have a proper proper calculations and even better if they can see the addition. I will say that. Even uh, now today, the guideline, if they're saying one adult female, we actually, we have to take two, we have to take 2,000 to 2,400 kilocal calorie per day. If I'm saying 50% is by our carbohydrate. So the carbohydrate itself is still, you are saying WHO asks us to take 10% of a simple sugar and even if better 5%. That means you can take five, five sugar cube per day, which is a lot already. Five sugar cube per day is not too much, which is 5%. So you still can touch normal sugar, but in the normal amount. So you have, but the outside beverage, usually you do not know how much sugar they put in your sugar especially i most uh wanted to uh make this a public awareness is that a lot of people think the fruit juice is the most nutritious ever in the world which is really not the truth well you have to understand the fruit juice they really process it and some of it put it the simple sugar that why we say the either is white sugar or brown sugar whatever so they increase the processing sugar they actually break the fiber of the normal food and also the why the why the normal food they break breaking through and they become a juice to you, they already become fructose and also they become glucose. Fructose couldn't metabolize in our human body, it won't become a sugar, it will become what it will become a fat and go to your liver. And the, the that's why we a lot of patients now become so young age also come to see us because of fatty liver. Number two, the sugar itself, why they become juice, the sugar itself is it is really add on, I mean it's become a processing one, it's not the fiber one. So it becomes harmful to the cell on body. So I always tell my patients, please take the whole fruit instead of you take the fruit juice, which is it sounds like it looks like very, very healthy 
uh, beverage, but it is in fact it is not. But I'm sorry, I don't know how much of people going to curse me after that because they sell the this uh, healthy beverage. I think I get myself in trouble. Right, right. But I think indeed we really need to be reminded on what we're actually eating, like outside, especially because we don't know how much sugar is inside. So better for us to eat whole foods at home, and then so we can actually have the whole fiber as well as well as all the vitamins that we need um, in our daily diet. Right, uh, I think we have, we can take one more question. We'll go with, uh, what is the main cause of diabetes? Is it mainly genetic? Okay, for the type 2 diabetes, which is, I think usually happen in adult, which is 90 to 95% in Malaysia, so yes, the family history is very important. Genetic is one of it. Uterine is multifactorial as well. So it's just like metabolic syndrome, like the obesity itself. It's multifactorial because of genetic predisposing. And if you are not really control your diet, and if you are not physically active, of course, all these factors will really cause someone either to be a diabetes in a, a, a very young age, despite they, they are not type 1 diabetes, but they still come to us young age while they are really eating uh, uncontrolled, poor physical activity, all these things. And uh, also, like what I said, if they have uh, other disease that causing them to have uh, taking the medication, we can be opposing to the diabetes. Of course, all this together, that person will get diabetes united. Then we have to deal with all the complications and try to get the patients to out of the, all the complications and to make them to, to live as healthy as possible. Yeah, so I'm, gu I'm guessing it's, it's a mixture of healthy, like, it's a mixture of lifestyle and culture. So even though you say it's gen genetic, maybe it runs in the family, you have the same type of habit that predisposes yourself to diabetes. Yeah, correct. Right, okay, we're coming to the end of our Q&A session. I know there are still a lot of questions coming in and we don't, did not manage to answer them. But don't worry, we'll compile them later on and then we'll email it to doctor and then she will answer them and then we'll, we'll uh, post it, the, quest, the answers on the Facebook pages later on. So I'm going to let Dr. Ma go off in a minute because she has a meeting right after this. But just before you go, doctor, any last tips or key take home away, key take away home messages that you think is beneficial and you would like to share it with all of us, please? Okay, um, I think prevention is better than cure. They are always emphasize that. And I think uh, in if you able to control your diet, really physically active, and also reduce the weight properly, if you are in the uh, in the group of overweight, in our Asian, our overweight is more than twenty three for the BMI. Is the if a West Western people they take the cutoff point is twenty five. So if you are, your BMI is around 18.5 to 23, you are still in an okay group, then it's okay, it's fine. Then if you are, you are overweight, you able to reduce the weight, really that the study show that you able to reduce your sugar by your own instead of taking the medication. I do not say that taking medication is not good, but it needs to be a compliance uh, and also the medications, the complication and side effect need to be monitored. And it, of course, the economically for some patients, they, they might have difficult to continue the medication and because the cost is, is an issue for them as well. So I sincerely hope that everyone can take care uh, themselves and our, or ourselves so that uh, prevent the diabetes. For those who are pre-diabetes, as I said, if you can prevent yourself to enter into a diabetes, you are physically active by right, you are the group that you can reverse yourself. Reverse, reverse to be non-diabetes and you get away from it and get your sugar check. And uh, after that, uh, once, once you die, not, not in the pre-diabetes group, you just need to get the yearly checkup will do. Yeah? Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor. Well, everyone say goodbye to Doctor. And see you again. Hey, bye. Nice Thank, you. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Now we're going to come to our giveaway session. I'm sure everyone of you are excited and have been waiting for it. 
So we're going to, so listen carefully because we're going to have two questions for two different prizes. So to participate in this giveaway, all you need to do is to answer the giveaway question by typing in your answer in the chat box. And we will then select those with the most accurate answer randomly and uh, with, the, with the most accurate answer. So do remember to like our Caring Pharmacy and Pantai Hospital Ampang Facebook pages because we'll be posting the winner's announcement on there next week. So for the first question, we will pick five winners with the most accurate answer randomly to win a 50 ringgit carrying cash voucher. Okay, so everyone ready? The first question is, name three types of diabetes. Name three types of diabetes. So type your question, your answers away. All right, we'll move on to the second giveaway question. So for the second question, we will select three winners with the most accurate answers randomly to win a complimentary health screening at Pantai Hospital Ampang, which worth a whopping 298 ringgit. All right. So are you ready for the second question? All right, the second question is, name three symptoms of diabetic kidney disease. Name three symptoms of diabetic kidney disease. So type your, question, your answers in. All right, I'm sure everyone have put their answers in the chat box now. Right, so we're approaching towards the end of this uh, session. But before that, I uh, just want to remind you that the feedback form will be emailed to your registered email shortly. And or alternatively, you may click on the feedback form link, which you can find it in the chat box section. So we would love to hear from you, whether you have enjoyed this webinar or if you have any um, suggestion that you would like us to listen to for further improvement or maybe you can type in any topic that you would like to listen in future. And we do appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to fill in the form for us. All right, thank you so much for your cooperation. Once again, don't forget to like our Caring Pharmacy and also Pantai Hospital Ampang Facebook pages to find out whether you're one of the lucky winners and also to, get, uh, to find out whether uh, Dr. Ma has answered your burning questions. All right, thank you. And it's time to say goodbye and good night, everyone. See ya. Every day looks a little different for everyone. As we go on with our busy lives, we sometimes forget that our body needs time to rest and replenish. The moment we open our eyes, our mind and consciousness goes into full gear. Whether it is in the classroom in school or the study room at home, we all need sufficient energy and nutrition for continual growth. For some of us, the day will look like morning tea with newspaper followed by gardening. Whatever the day looks like, we all need sufficient energy to carry it out and the right nutrition for continual growth.